Good morning. My name is Dr. Manish Shankarhari. I'm an NIHR clinician scientist. I'm going to discuss the topic immunoprotective and immunopathogenic potential in COVID-19 patients. My acknowledgments, I am a researcher funded by the Department of Health, NIHR Clinician Scientist Award UK. Uh, these views are of mine, not necessarily of the NHS, NIHR, or the Department of Social Care. I do not have any direct conflicts of interest to this talk. What do we mean by immunoprotective responses? Immunoprotective responses are things that help body survive infection. For example, Pathogens need to be sensed, and those danger signals are sensed by pathogen-associated molecular patterns. An activated leukocyte will kill the pathogen. Example, an activated T cell would kill a virus. And then, as immune cells need to inform the adaptive immune system to generate long-term memory to prevent secondary infection. What are immunopathogenic mechanisms? These are mechanisms that damage the host. An example of that would be viral infection of the lung damaging the lung, causing ARDS. Excessive inflammation causing cytokine excess, an impaired antigen presentation of the, to the adaptive immune cells resulting in less memory cells. Those are examples of immunopathogenic signals. Let's consider these in the context of COVID-19 infection. Viral infection, uh, such as coronavirus infection, is sensed by the cell surface TLRs, intracellular TLRs, and rig-like pattern recognition receptors. This results in activation of NF-kappa B and IRF proteins 3 and 7. This, in turn, increases the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines and interferons, type 1 and type 3. In viral infection, type 1 interferons, such as interferon alpha and beta, and type 3 interferons, such as interferon lambda, are important both for pathogen clearance and for pathogenesis of the viral infection. Let's consider the pathogenic potential of this SARS-CoV-2 with an example of immune cell interaction and immune cell-related abnormality causing organ damage. Dendritic cells and epithelial cells release interferons. Interferons limit the viral replication, especially the type 1 interferon alpha and beta. However, a type 3 interferon, such as interferon lambda, would increase apoptosis and epithelial proliferation and tissue injury. When we think about SARS-CoV-2 infection and immunology data that is published in the literature, most infections are asymptomatic, then there are mild community infections and severe hospital-acquired hospital infections or critically ill patients with coronavirus disease. In terms of the data, most of the data that is out there is the patients who are hospitalized and in ICU patients. There are some key manuscripts that have been published recently. Um, those have been in uh, Nature Medicine, the Dynamic COVID-19 Immune Signature, uh, Single Cell Atlas, and in Science, Deep Immunoprofiling and Comprehensive Mapping of Immune Perturbations. I'm going to focus on this paper that we led uh, from the UK that got published in Nature Medicine. So the first point uh, has been made by the previous one of the previous speakers. There is cytokine production, but it is no different to someone with a lower respiratory tract infection. These graphs on the x-axis show the different populations we studied. Controls, seropositive, are light and dark blue. The low, moderate, to severe COVID-19 infection is in orange, and lower respiratory tract infection is in turquoise blue. Those that have got a viral are in dark turquoise color, and those who are non-viral lower respiratory tract infection are light in color. On the y-axis are the cytokine concentrations. As you move from left to right, in patients with COVID-19 disease, they've got IL-8 that is similar to that of a lower respiratory tract infection. IL-6 is if there is a dose response with more severe illness, there is a greater increase in IL-6. IL-10 is similar. The graphs where you see a X, which essentially are patients who uh, have got, who die from coronavirus disease. They seem to have higher IL-6 and higher IL-10. An interesting cytokine that is seldom reported in the literature is IP-10, which is an inter or CXCL-10, which is an interferon-related interferon signature. And what you see here is patients with severe disease have got a way higher IP-10 concentration, and those who die 
have a further higher IAP10 concentration. We'll come back to that in, later on in the talk. When you think about viral infections, if you get an early interferon response, the viral clearance is rapid and you get mild disease, which is what's happening in most of the patients. Whereas in patients with higher viral load or older hosts, what you start to see is a increase in interferon response that is delayed and sustained. And this results in cytokine uh, production and severe disease and inflammation. So with that sort of background information in mind, let's consider what happens to the immune system in these patients. This is a graph of the innate immune system, the same uh, uh, principle in terms of color coding, control and zero, control populations and uh, zero positive patients are in uh, blue. The COVID-19 patients in orange, those who die are in X marks the spot, and then patients with lower respiratory tract infections are in turquoise. What you see here is patients with severe COVID-19 disease have got increased neutrophil count. The eosinophil fill count is very similar to that of a lower respiratory tract infection. What is striking are a decrease in plasma cytoid dendritic cells, which are a major source of uh, interferon production, uh, which is reduced in severe disease the most. And there is a decrease in basophil count. And remember, when I started the talk, I highlighted that antigen presentation to the adapt between the innate and adaptive immune system is extremely important for production of memory. One surrogate marker for antigen kind of presentation ability on cells such as monocytes, which are antigen presenting cells, is HLA-DR MFI. What you see in this graph is a decrease in HLA-DR MFI, very similar to that of lower respiratory tract infection in more severe disease. And this HLA-DR MFI is decreased in classical monocytes, and the increase in IP10 is associated with a worse uh, or more severe decrease in basophils. And these are important early signatures in the immune system, which we start to kind of think maybe of prognostic value. Let's look at the B cells. Um, an immune response happens within, from the, within weeks of onset of symptoms. And what you see here on the y-axis are different IgG response to RBD, to spike protein, and IgM response to spike protein. So we had seropositive and seronegative controls. What you see here is seronegative controls have got no IgG antibodies, whereas seropositive controls and patients with coronavirus disease, low, moderate, and severe, have got IgG uh, and IgM antibodies. In B cells, what you see is a characteristic CD5 positive B cell response and a vigorous early plasma blast response in patients with severe COVID-19 disease. Let's uh, look at the T cell compartment. T cell compartment, uh, the graphs are very similarly labeled as before. Patients who are controls uh, are labeled in blue, and patients with non-COVID lower respiratory tract infection is in turquoise green, and patients with COVID-19 disease is in orange. What you see here is a decrease in T cell count in patients with COVID-19. It affects both CD4 and CD8, but it varies between patients. A particular type of T cell, which is involved in early uh, host response, is a gamma delta T cell that is decreased. And you see that the reduction is much more prominent in patients with uh, who'd go on to die. When you look at the CD8 population, which is very important in the context of viral uh, host response to infection, what you see here is this fundamental changes in the naive CD8 T cells, central memory, the effector memory, and the CD8 uh, effector memory population is uh, decreased in patients with severe disease, and the reduction is comparable uh, to that of patients with lower respiratory tract infection. These T cells are also show evidence of exhaustion in the in the form of increase in the checkpoint molecule expression. And the T cells are also in a different phase of the cell cycle. Instead of being in the G0 phase, majority of the T cells are in the G1 or G1S or G2 phase. Let's pull these uh, T cell changes together in the context of severe infection versus mild infection. What you see on the left is a figure from Chen and Wery's review. 
what they highlight is in patients with, if you take a naive CD8 T cell in mild disease, these get activated, get clonally expanded, and go on to form memory T cells. That's a normal response. That's an immunoprotective response. What happens when you have severe disease is because the antigen presentation is impaired, these T cells are less activated. They terminally differentiate and become what is called as an exhausted T cell. The figure on the right uh, is a naive T cell CD4 population. What you see in mild disease is that these T cells proliferate and they form germinal centers. This is an example of an immunoprotective response. These germinal centers would go on to produce memory B cells, which then can be extremely helpful to prevent a reinfection. What you also see here in this context is the antibody, as the memory cells are formed, the antibody levels gradually start to come down. By six, by around 12 to 12 weeks or so, the antibody responses are decreased in the context of COVID-19 viral infection. In severe disease, um, the naive T cells are essentially um, contribute towards the cytokine excess and hyperactivation of the plasma blasts. And these plasma blasts are not going to go on to develop uh, B cell memory in the conventional way. And that is important because in patients who are critically ill or severely ill with COVID-19, they essentially end up being immunoparetic and there is long-term Im implications for immunopathology. So uh, to summarize what was a very quick overview of the immunoprotective and immunopathogenic responses in COVID-19. Majority of the COVID-19 infections are mild or asymptomatic. We have limited data in this population. We need more data to understand the duration of protective immunity in the form of T cells or vaccine. And we, I highlighted to you an immunoprotective response and an immunopathogenic response. The immunoprotective responses include the early interferon responses, of, especially the type 1, the leukocyte activation of CD8 cells to kill the virus, early plasma blast response, and the antibody responses. The immunopathogenic responses are the cytokine excess, an altered interferon response, an excess of IP10, and lymphocyte exhaustion. Thank you very much.